Good afternoon. I'm Tim Carter, and you're watching Ask the Builder. <laughs> I'm live, and it's Monday, February 21st. We should have a really good stream today. There's lots going on. Uh, just um, literally just maybe 10 minutes ago, I was uh, I was texting back and forth Alex, you know, who is a contractor in Los Angeles, and he's uh, He's taking the week off. Uh, good for him. Uh, he's he's going to go Colorado to ski. So uh, um, I told him I think my snow skiing days are over because I, I'm afraid of falling and breaking a hip. Uh, you know, I I wasn't a bad skier in my day. Um, I started skiing late in life, and I once I finally figured out once you get the right length skis. And, and once you get the boots on tight enough, um, it's really not that hard to turn. And the, the biggest thing, the biggest fear is people, if you've not skied before, when you snow ski, you kind of get going. It doesn't take long, doesn't take far to get going pretty fast and you feel out of control. And then, then fear takes over and it's all over. Uh, but as soon as you learn how to turn, you can just, I mean, literally you can stop on a dime. I mean, it's, doesn't take far to stop. So um, anyway, uh, Alex is on his way to Colorado. Jason, how the heck you doing? Glad you're here. I um, all right. We're going to talk a little bit right now about uh, floor trusses. And I, Alex said he was really upset that he couldn't watch the live stream. You know, being a builder, he's. I don't know if he's ever used them uh, or not. Uh, it's kind of funny. A lot of builders, it just depends on what you're doing, but if they're specified in a job or whatever, but here's what floor trusses are. So you know what a roof truss is, how they take smaller dimensional lumber and then they, they put it into a bunch of triangles. Basically you can create very giant, huge trusses that span 30, 40 feet out of just two by fours. And because of the magic of uh, engineering, uh, they they can uh, they they can make it out of two by fours. Whereas a traditional roof, you would never be able to do that. You'd be using big two by eights, two by tens for the rafters. Uh, very very complicated, and you know a lot of big lumber. So floor trusses. I mean, what if I told you my daughter's home? I mean, that's the picture in the thumbnail for this, which was made out of all two by fours, and they just put them flat. And same thing, they um, they just make a bunch of different triangles. And depending on how far you need to span is how deep they are and also how much deflection you want in the floor truss. You can engineer the floor trusses to be very, very stiff. And the minimum that I would go would be one in 360, but you can go as high as one in 480. And uh, I know that doesn't mean much. Just go to my website. You can uh, read all about it. Uh, I am going to give you, um, I'm going to try to take you back to the uh, floor uh, truss uh, column here because you need to be able to, to link to it from, if you're just watching this, uh, if you've come onto the stream and and you um, wonder what the heck is he talking about? So just go, I'm, I'm pasting in the URL where you can see a photograph of a floor truss. The, the photograph in that column those are actually the floor trusses we used in my daughter's new home uh, three years ago. Hello, Louise. Great to see you here. Howdy, howdy. And those floor trusses span about 28 feet. Now think about that. No bearing holes. So floor trusses allow you to do a lot of really interesting things if you like an open floor plan. Um, they're really, and they're, they're not that much more expensive. And what's interesting is they go together so fast What's also really good about floor trusses, another really great thing, is they are all made in the same template. In other words, at the factory, when they set everything up, every floor truss comes out identical. I mean, within a sixteenth of an inch. <laughs> okay. What that means is that as long as your bearing walls are level and everything's square, that means your floor is going to be perfectly flat. All right. So that that that's so important. 
it's really important if you're putting down ceramic tile. Um, it's really helpful when you're putting in a kitchen that the floor is perfectly flat. Uh, it just makes things so much easier. And it, it's there, there's just so many advantages and they're, they're, they're easy to handle. Uh, you can put the, the, my daughter's floor. So my daughter's entire floor, for example, that, that creates her second floor of her home. They set the floor trusses uh, and then they sheathed it in one day. Uh, you know, a crew of like four guys, maybe, maybe there were five, but it just doesn't, um, you, it, you would never do that. Typically you would not do that with, um, with regular floor joist, you know, cause you've got a bearing wall involved and you're sitting there crowning the floor joist. You're trying to get that crown out, blah, blah, blah. It's crazy. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. If you have any questions about floor trusses, happy to answer them. Uh, you can get them made. Just type it in. Type your question into the chat. That's the whole point of the chat. So, and also, if you have a question about any other topic, it doesn't matter. I, I you know, I'll, I'll answer your question about roofing. Uh, it could be plumbing, uh, whatever. It doesn't matter. The floor trusses are made by the same companies, typically that make either the roof trusses or the wall panels. You'll have factories. Uh, for example, here in my home, I have a, a, a in my state, probably. Um, I don't know, 15, 20 miles from where I live is a factory that would make uh, floor trusses. They make wall panels. Uh, they can make roof trusses. They can make them all. It's not a problem. All right. Uh, Benitez, that's Benitez. How much cost? Here we go. How much will it cost to replace the furnace and boiler for one unit? It's old and I don't. <laughs> uh, well, I <laughs> that I'll answer your question. Uh, 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 this is a great teaching moment, by the way. This is a great teaching moment. <laughs> um, let's see. How? What would be a great question that I could ask you? Um, uh, oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. How, how, how many grains of sand do you think are in a bag of sand at Home Depot? <laughs> right. So I'm, I, I don't mean to be smart aleck. Um it's impossible for me to give you a price quote uh, for a host of reasons. And I'm going to go down and tell you why it's impossible. Number one, I don't know where you live. Number two, I don't know how big your boiler needs to be. Number three, I don't know how many zones you have. I don't know. Um, I don't know how hard it's going to be to take the old boiler out. I don't know how hard it's going to be to get the new boiler in. I don't know what type of permit fees you have in your area. I don't know what the boiler people in your area charge per hour. Um, I, I could go on with another 15 or 20 questions if you want. Uh, the point is, um, the only way that you're going to get an accurate quote for work like that to be done is you need to bring, you need to get two or three heating contractors out to your house or your apartment building or whatever this is, so that they can look at what they have to do, and then they can give you a quote. It's impossible for a person like me to give you a number. I mean, I can pull a number out of the air if you want, but it, it, the odds of it being right are one in a million. So I, I'm sorry I can't really help you, but I think I'm trying to I'm trying to share with you why I cannot give you a number. <laughs> it's just there you you have you have to be you have to. It, it would be like a, I guess a simple analogy might be, uh, would be if you um, had some type of surgery scheduled, some type of internal surgery, but the doctor was not allowed to look at x-rays or anything else before the surgery. And you ask him, so is this going to be easy or hard? I, you know, what, what, and he would go up. I don't know. I don't know until I get in, until I catch you up and see what's inside. So, I mean, that's, that's, in other words, you need to see, a contractor needs to see your situation to give you a number. But thanks for the question. Pretty good one. You can bring as many contractors as you want. Your big problem is going to be right now. Well, uh, tell me, just tell me where you live. Just share, share where you live. I'd like to know where you live. If, you know, just give me, not your address, your home address, just what city and state are you in? 
And because then I'm going to tell you how easy it's going to be to get quotes or how hard it's going to be. Um, while you're typing, I'm going to go to Gucci. Uh, okay, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. All right, good. So Cedar Rapids, well, shouldn't be too hard. I, I would think that you could pretty easily get two, um, two people out. If you wanted to get free bids really quickly, if you want to get free bids really quickly, stand by. I will give you a link. How's that sound? I will give you a flipping link. And if you go to this link that I'm going to give you and fill it out, just fill out the form. They're not going to bother you. They're not flipping axe murderers. By God, you will get, um, you will get quotes within um, right here. Just a second. I'm getting the, I'm getting the link for you. Oh, no, 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 no. Just a second. It's taking a while. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Just a second. There we go. All right. Now. All right. Uh, S. Uh, Benitez. I'm going to put this link in here. You go here. Let's see. Cedar Rapids, Iowa. So it would be. Um, here's what it is. I guarantee you if you fill that out today. If you fill that out right now, if you go to that form and you fill that out, you fill out the form there, you will have calls from at least two oiler contractors by noon tomorrow. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. So, so just, you know, schedule them to come out, have them look at it. They'll give you a price. Simple as that. Uh, all right, here we go. Uh all right. So I'm going to assume that it's a serious question. Um um, boy, a lot of good questions coming in. Stand by. We're going to go to the dancing pole question. So if you really want to put in a dancing pole, you've got to secure it very well to both the floor and to the ceiling and to solid blocking. You can't just put it on the drywall. You have to get it into the a floor joist or a truss. A um, lot of stress on dancing, not dancing poles. I, not that I've ever seen anybody use one, but um, I, just just I hear I hear there's a lot of stress on it when they start swinging around. So got to get it secured really well. Uh, you're welcome, Benitez. In fact, you know what I would really like, Ash, about the boiler? If you go to that form and you fill it out and you get the quotes and whatever, I would love for you to come back and let me know about the experience. How was it? How was the experience? Um, and, and know that you might be able to get better, slightly better prices if you work a little harder. That, so you need to know that. You need to know that. All right. Um, all right. Here we go. Uh, how much of the truss should sit on the foundation? Um, Steve wants to know, how much of the truss should sit on the foundation? Looked at a house with trusses. Only the top plate was on the foundation. The rest of the truss hung below. Oh, so it depends on the design of the floor truss, Steve. Um, it just depends. Uh, you There are... If you look at certain bridges and actual bridge designs, there are bridges where just one of the cords, the bottom of the top cord only, is the actual bearing point. So it just depends. It, a really great example of this would be the bar, what we call a bar joist. That, For example, if you go into, I hate to say it, Home Depot, Lowe's, and you look up at the ceiling, typically you'll see a bar joist. And those bar joists... Um, they only bear on the top on the top cord, so there that's perfectly okay. Um, and as far as it being spongy, well, they maybe they didn't. Um, they might not have designed the floor right. I mean, they, they may have done it to a one and two forty standard, uh, which I think is code minimum one and two forty. Uh, so um, that's why you need to do it yourself. I mean, you need to be in the specs yourself. Um, all right. Um, all right, Josh. Josh wants to install a fan tech for both bathroom exhausts. How do you wire two switches in two separate bathrooms to one fan? Uh, that well, um, fan tech. You can get the switches from them, I'm, and I mean, I think I have a video. Well, I have a video showing how to put in a fan tech fan. That, um, but. Um, 
it seems like all you would need to do would be to put in a, th a regular three-way switch. If you're trying to control one fan from two different locations, you're going to need a three-way switch. And I don't know if you can find a fancy one that goes with the Fantech fans or just a standard regular three-way switch because the fan is really no different than a light. It doesn't matter what you're turning on and off. So that, that's really simple to... Um, Easy. It's so simple. Just go watch my three-way switch video. I mean, seriously, I have my original. I have a. I have a three-way switch. I'll find it for you right now. Let's just do it because um, I want people to go to my website. Um, three-way switch. This is where it would be nice to have a director here. You know. So here is the my original uh, three-way switch video. It's been watched like a million and a half times. Some say it's the best three-way switch video on YouTube. Um, and it's really, I mean, we've, it's so old that, um, you know, it's not HD. Um, yeah, that's the one. It was filmed in four by three format, not 16 by Standby, giving you the uh, link to it. So gosh, all you gotta do is do this. But just imagine that the light that's in my video is actually your fan, all right? Um, you're welcome, uh, Gucci, not a problem, just... Um, you that the seal the ceiling and the floor context for that dancing pole really important uh, solid blocking you know you cannot uh, and don't don't be using any little baby screws they've got to be pretty big uh, probably quarter inch bolts uh, quarter inch minimum uh, maybe five sixteenths some great questions today jeez oh Pete I'll tell you what. Um, <clears throat> Thomas wants to know what is the recommended centers for common rafters. I, it depends on who you talk to, Thomas. Um, <laughs> Bar Harbor was great. Um, I'll send you an email about it, Bar Harbor, uh, later as well. Um, so, Thomas, if you talk to a silver top like me, that's what Steve calls us, uh, calls me. Um, I would say 16 inches on center. You talk to some younger guy, some young uh, whippersnapper carpenter who's 28 years old who thinks he knows everything. Um, he's probably going to say 24 inches because that's all he's used to. You know, he's used to putting up trusses 24 inches on center. Um, I, if you know, given given a given my druthers, I would always go 16 inches on center for for common rafters. All right, so common rafters. Um, to me, that's that. When you say common rafters, that tells me we're we're gonna do the roof the old-fashioned way with the framing square, and we're not gonna use trusses. That's what that says to me. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. That was a great one. <laughs> Will takes out as he retracts his question. <laughs> All right, Steve. My ceiling fan and light stopped working. It looks like it turned on for a second, then blew out. The fan is like 10 to 15 years old. Did it just burn out? <laughs> I need... <laughs> I'm in a pretty good mood today. I swear, I need to go get one of those Johnny Carson Kreskin hats. All right? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? That The Swami, like the Swami tall hat with like a big jewel in front of it. <laughs> Steve... I, I've got a lot of skills. I swear I do. <laughs> but I'm not clairvoyant. <laughs> so I don't know. So you would probably have to... Um, I mean, the first thing I would do is I would go make sure that the breaker didn't pop. You didn't pop the breaker. All right. So let's make sure that we got power going to the switch for, for starters. All right. And then um, if the breaker's on and good... <clears throat> then if it was me, if I had easy access to the fan, uh, typically there's a little place, a little place where you can get access to the wire nuts that where the power line came into the fan. Of course, I, me, I would take all that apart really quickly and take the wire nuts off and I would put my tester on there and turn the switch on to see if I got power coming into the fan. So you just have to do some diagnostic work, Commander. Simple as that. Uh, Josh, I didn't, I just didn't want to turn it off from one bedroom. It was on in another already. Well, Josh, 
then um, you're going to need those fancy switches you sometimes see in a factory that come with a little indicator light that shows powers going through the switch. That's what you need. In other words, you need to know when you look at either three-way switch that you've got power moving through the switch. Um, so that's how you would work that. That's how you would deal with that. You're making it much more complicated, just so you know. Um, a turbine, a turbine. Thank you, Will. There you go, a turbine. <laughs> okay, yes, Thomas, good. Okay, common frame. So 16 inches on center, Thomas, for your common roof afters. That's what I would do. You'll never, you'll never regret it. Never. That roof will be solid as, well, I used to say solid as Sears, but Sears is no longer. <laughs> uh, Jimmy says, I'm not looking, looking forward to clue. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> My daughter would say, I'm sorry for your bad luck. <laughs> we don't come here expecting to get any flipping sympathy, man. Don't even this is the wrong place to come to to get to get your sympathy tank filled up. <laughs> All right. This is the these are some fantastic questions today. I just you never know what's gonna happen. S Benitez says again, how real can, I don't know, what, I don't, you must have typed this wrong. How real can be, how be, be to build a shower with several water? Uh, it's very, it's very easy. It's very easy to do that. I mean, I'm a, I'm a master plumber. Um, there's nothing hard about it at all. I mean, I, as far as the, if you're doing this in a shower where you're going to clean your body, it's going to be a, it's going to be stupid. It's totally stupid. Because an atomizing mist, you're not going to get, you're not, with an atomizing, uh, here, let me put it this way. With an atomizing mist, it might take you a couple of days to rinse the shampoo out of your hair. <laughs> you, you need to have a lot of water flowing on your body in a shower. That's why some people I know, Some people take those little flow restrictor discs out of the flipping shower heads. Yeah. <laughs> to hell with those things. <laughs> I'm not saying for you to do it. <laughs> Just, you want a lot of water on you in the shower. I talked about this the other day, by the way. Um, when I when I pipe a, a new, when, I, when I'm the plumber on a job and I'm putting water lines in for a shower, I always put two hot water lines, like two half inch lines. Like I'll put in two, two of these PEX lines. This is a, this has got the blue for cold water, but imagine it's red. I would put two of these going to the hot water side of the shower valve. Cause I want to make sure that there is plenty of hot water coming to that valve. Um, <laughs> LOL. You're right. Could you, I mean, have you ever been to an out, I mean, if you've gone to the Southwest where it's hot uh, and, and they, they have at these uh, outdoor restaurants, they have these atomizing misters, you know, to keep you cool. And they really work. They're, they're amazing. They're amazing. They, you know, you can sit in one, you don't get wet, but the, it blocks the sun's heat, you know, cause it's all absorbed by the tiny droplets of water. The, um, but they it would never work to wash your body. I can tell you that you're not, you're not, <laughs> you'd be there in there forever. <laughs> I can't even imagine it. I can't even imagine trying to shampoo under an atomizer. Uh, <laughs> oh, all right. So I want to share a couple of things. I want to share. So Kathy, my wonderful, wonderful wife. Um, oh, two things. Let me go first. First. This is really important. This is so important. <laughs> but if you have 20 together, it doesn't matter how many you have together. It's not going to work. <laughs> it's not going to work. Kathy, if you remember last week, I think it was right at the end of Thursday's live stream, <clears throat> I was talking about, I don't know how I got in the subject. I talked about how, oh, we were talking about inflation again. I was talking about inflation. 
and I was talking about how it's going to get worse and how my prediction is in the next, I don't know, five to 10 years, <clears throat> the homelessness issue in places where it's warm is going to get a lot worse. Look what I found today on, when I was skimming the news. Check out this. Um, uh, check out this. This is not. These aren't homeless people, but it's it. it the opening of this story um, is is exactly what I was talking about. Wait till you read that story. Wait till you read that story, and it opens up about a guy who was living in Phoenix on a fixed income. He just was on Social Security. He didn't have a fancy job. He never saved a bunch of money. And let me tell you, there are tens of millions of people like this guy. Tens of millions. His rent went up. And wait till you see what he did. Whole lot. Hello, El. El Mosfet. I, you know what? I, I don't speak Spanish, but I know that that means hello. So hello to you. Tim's dad. <laughs> Wait a minute. My dad's up in heaven. How can he be typing a question? Do you recommend a steel building for a second garage? Well, you know, there's a lot of advantages to steel buildings. Um, you know, especially the ones that come from the factory where they're already pre-engineered. The wall panels have been painted with a, a paint that's probably going to last 40 years. Um they're a little harder to insulate. Uh, it would be really interesting, actually, to do a cost, uh, a side-by-side -side cost analysis of um, a steel garage versus, you know, just doing one like my shed, you know, which is just regular two-by-sixes, two-by-fours. Um, I think you're going to be, I mean, I think you're going to be surprised. Um, the big problem with the steel ones that I can see is that some of the parts of the steel ones, I'm not saying you'd need a crane, but you might need three or four people at certain parts of the job to help put that thing up and realize the problem with steel, no nails. All right. No nails, everything drill and screw self tapping screws, whatever it might be. So um, it's, it's a, it's a bigger challenge. It's a much bigger challenge and it's much harder to remodel down the road. That's all. But steel, I mean, are you kidding me? It's it's a great product. I love everything about steel. Man, we got so many good people here today. This is wonderful. Uh, simulator YouTuber, hello. Norma, hello. Clint, look at all. These are such, this is what I envisioned the live stream was going to be, just so you know. Today is what I envisioned it might be. A lot of people, a lot of new people asking lots of different questions. It's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. All right, here, let me get caught up. While I'm reading, I'm going to get something to drink. Clint says, bought a house. All first floor is wood paneling. Okay. I, you know what? I wouldn't have taken down the paneling. That's a shame you did that. Um, you... Um, what a shame you took that paneling down only because, and, you know, every place, because what's really interesting about the old wood paneling, you know, it's got those little grooves in it. And if you paint paneling because it's got that groove in it, it actually can look pretty interesting. And some of the paneling actually has a sculpted look within, you know, what used to be flat. So it's, um, you if, don't if, if you haven't if there's still some paneling up in some of the other rooms before you take it down at the very least just get a quart of paint and paint part of a wall to see if you like it. All right, here's your question. You want to figure it out. You fill it, finish up. But every fourth stud is randomly 20 inches from center. The rest are 16. I have no idea why they would have done that. I don't. I can't even imagine. Um, ah, uh, why they would have done that, Clint? I I don't know. We'd have to ask the carpenter. It doesn't make sense. Simulator to YouTube. I'm a bricklayer. Dude, I have laid so many flipping brick. I wish I had a photo. It's a, it, you know, this was 35 years ago. I wish that I would have taken more photos. Uh, video cameras were huge back in the day, back then. Like the big shoulder ones, like the news guys used. Uh, 
you should see the serpentine wall, retaining wall I built behind my last house. Probably, I don't know, 80 feet long, beautiful sweeping curves, two inside curves, one outside curve, two staircases, brick staircases that go up from one level to the other, uh, massive paving brick patios that I've done, sidewalks. I would typically pour a five inch thick slab with a half inch rebar, two feet on center in the slab, just screed off the slab, nice and smooth, not bowl floated even, not even bowl float, just, just nice screeded so there's no humps. And then I would lay the paving brick, four by eight paving brick in uh, Portland cement mortar with a, a half inch uh, gap, come back later with one of those mortar bags to fill in. Uh, oh my gosh, I don't know how many miles of, uh, <laughs> of those lines I filled in. Uh, but I um, I love doing that. So I've I've laid a lot of brick. I, I'm not as fast as you are, but I can do it. I can lay brick. It's a great skill, by the way. Good for you. I'm glad that you're here. Okay. Um, Will says maybe they did the panels like that to match where the grooves and panels lined up. Well, well, that, you might think that, but old fashioned uh, paneling, wood paneling, um, was four by eight. It was modular. And not only that, if you really paid attention, the actual lines in the wood paneling, although they appeared to be random, uh, they were those line, two of those lines within the panel were either 16 or 32 inches from either edge. So that when you put the tiny little colored nails in, you know, in other words, typically those lines were black or they were a darker brown, you would buy these tiny one inch long nails that were ring shank, very tiny. And you would put those right in the groove so that you never had a nail on the face of the paneling where it was smoother. Um, all right. L says the wood panels helps to heating system like insulation. Otherwise, you spend more money. I, I guess. I, I don't know. I mean, wood paneling has, has got a very small R factor. Um, Clint says, I saved it in a few rooms. Good for you. Oh, you already painted it uh, that I like it. Good. Good for you. Uh, it's just the living room I'm tearing out. Uh, it does look grid painted, but the boss wants to draw. Yes. Yes. The boss. <laughs> she who must be obeyed. I got it. I got it. <laughs> I totally understand. <laughs> Happy, look who's here. Lorene will say, Lorene will back us up. Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> so Clint, if the boss says drywall, we're doing drywall. <laughs> Will says, okay, I'm not a builder, just a moderator. LOL. <laughs> this is a great live stream. Boy, Alex is missing it, man. Alex, right now, Alex is, um, so Alex uh, was, let's see, it's been half an hour. Alex started to text me a little under an hour ago, and he was boarding his aircraft. I would say Alex is taxied. He's been, he's up in the air, all right? So he probably taken off from LAX. Um, he's been in the air 15 minutes. So he is just about now heading over Las Vegas, would be my guess. Doesn't take long in the air to get, get over Las Vegas from LAX. <laughs> Lorraine says, this is true. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, the bricklayer simulator. I watched your video. That was a great, you know, that lawnmower video. So that was, um, um, that was, a, here's the backstory of the lawnmower video. So John Deere reached out to me saying, hey, would you like to test two lawnmowers? Yeah, sure, go ahead. You know, I'll do a video. I didn't get paid a penny. I mean, <laughs> and my son-in-law, well, he wasn't my son-in-law at the time, but he he was a he was my videographer and he was editing my videos and he said I got a pretty good idea what we can do with this uh, video. He said you just have to trust me. I said okay fine. So it was his idea, you know, about how how we did the beginning of that video and what we did at the end. And here's the funny part is that over the I I had early on if you were to go back and dig through, I don't know there's hundreds and hundreds of comments there hundreds, maybe thousands thousands of comments. I, I would, I even got some email from some moms. I'm, this is true. I almost sound like Donnie Hoyle. 
and you suck at Photoshop. These were happy emails. The moms would say that they're, they they somehow they stumbled across this video, and and I'm talking toddlers, you know, like a kid that's two three years old. So this is going back a while, because <laughs> that video has got to be I don't know, it's got to be fifteen years old. <laughs> and they would they, they would watch the video, and the kids would say, "I want to watch it again, watch it again." So I mean, the moms are watching this video, you know, hitting replay, 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 replay. So so and and then. I, there are comments under that video where somebody like you says, I used to watch that video when I was a kid. <laughs> so, you know, they, they, they stumbled across it again. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Uh, all right. Okay. So let me get caught up. So El Mosfet says, when are you going to talk about septic systems? How about right now? Is that good enough for you? What do you say? How about we talk about them right now? So, and here's what I want to know. Here, you're going to direct the conversation. I want you, L. Mosfet, uh, to tell me, uh, just give me the top three things you want to know so that I don't waste a lot of time. Not that I mind wasting the time, but just type in the top three things you want to know about septic system. While you do that, I will go um, to Norma uh, and Jason, Jason the Lurker. <laughs> Norma says, husband building a garage. Would you suggest a plastic sheet? And others Absolutely, yes. Absolutely. And not just any plastic sheet. Go here. I'll do this for you. Um, I'm going to find for you uh, this column, Norma. See, I'm not a woman. Like, you know, see if... if um, Norma or Lorraine was doing this, um, they would be able to talk intelligently and um, at the same time as they typed. But I'm a man and we are unable, most of us, at least me, I'm unable to, to really do a good job of multitasking. Okay, uh, so Norma, I want you to read the column and you want to make sure that the vapor retarder you get is uh, on the label is ASTM 1745. So ASTM 1745, don't buy the crappy ones from the orange store or the blue store. Uh, you might be able to get the ASTM 45 one at the orange store, the blue store. You might. But I give you a link to, the, to this great vapor retarder in, in that column. Uh, so, yes, um, you absolutely want to do that. You do. Otherwise, you're going to be fighting, flipping, rust and all kinds of stuff down the road. That's a great question, by the way. Uh, Kikahuna, this sounds like you're from Hawaii. And I live in Pahrump, Nevada. It takes as long to drive to Las Vegas as flying from LA. Uh, only a trailer as long if you drive from LA. Um, uh, the long to drive to Las Vegas is flying from LA. Um, oh, I know what you mean. I think you're actually talking airport to airport because you're adding in the time of being there an hour before the flight and hour, I, I got that. I'm just talking about if that 737 that Alex got on was at the end of the runway and they, the, the, the pilot, you know, pushed those things forward, uh, you know, the thrusters, the, 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 uh, fuel, um, that jet, you know, those jets travel, what, 500 miles an hour. And what's the, what's the road distance from LA to Las Vegas? 200 and, it's only 200 miles. So that jet, I mean, by the time it gets to the end of the runway, is already at 160, 170. That's the stall speed. So by the time it gets to 10,000 feet, that flipping jet's got to be going 300 miles an hour. So so uh, it doesn't take long to get from LAX to, to, uh, to Las Vegas in the air. I know that. All right. Um, all right. Good. Finally, I got your questions in. All right. Cleaning and maintenance. Um, um, Pahrump, Nevada. I, I don't, I think I've been to Pahrump. Um, th oh, 300 miles from LA. Okay. LV. Thank you. I, uh, thank you. Um, anyway, I, it's, I, I know you, um, I mean, if it's 300 miles and it's a five hour drive, I don't care what, you know, five, four and a half hour drive. All right. So cleaning and maintenance of a septic tank. Here we go. 
you own you uh, with typical people. So you only have to clean your septic tank out every three years if you use it like normal people do. If you if you were to install a bidet in your home, if you have a bidet and you don't put toilet paper into the septic system, and and you only put into the septic system bodily waste. And at your kitchen sink, you have one of the screen food catchers. So only the tiniest, tiny, I mean, very tiny, like a grain of sand sized pieces of food get into your septic system. And, and you don't let any grease, no grease, like minimal amounts of grease get in your septic system. And that's easy to do. I've got a column about it. In other words, you, after you cook in your pots and pans, you let them cool down a little bit. They're still warm. The grease is still liquid. And you take old paper towels that are not really soiled too badly, but they've dried out. And you use the paper towels to get all of the grease out of the pots and pans. And you put those paper towels in the garbage. Okay, so if you do all those things, bidet, hardly any food, no grease. I know you're going to find this hard to believe. You never have to have your septic system pumped. Never. Well, I don't know. Maybe once every 10 years. Maybe. Maybe. Um, but it, you got to have the bidet. You've got to like no toilet paper. All right. So that's going to be a little problematic because you're not going to put a bidet in every bathroom. And when your guests come over here in America, they're going to be like, what the heck is a bidet? I mean, they're not, they're going to like, oh my gosh. All right. So normally it's three years. So here in New Hampshire, we just had our septic system pumped last December, thousand gallon tank. All right, so that's a pretty big one. Um, cost me, um, I think, two hundred ninety-five dollars. So say three hundred bucks. So it's a hundred dollars a year to maintain it. Uh, there's no other maintenance. The 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 big. I have a, quite a few columns on my website about septic systems. You should read them all. It's really important that you watch what you put into your septic tank. The only thing that's supposed to go in, like I said, is bodily waste. Uh, tiny food scraps. That's it. Nothing else. Don't wash a flipping paintbrush out. Don't, I mean, don't, I mean, just no paint, no harsh chemicals, no, no anything. Just what comes out of your body and tiny pieces of food. That's it. Nothing else. All right. Let me get caught up because otherwise I'm going to miss out. Uh, missing. Yeah, you're exactly right. Um, Lorraine, um, I've got that on my website. You you don't ever want to put chlorine bleach down a septic system because the chlorine bleach uh, kills the bacteria that's eating up all the waste in the tank. So no bleach. Vinegar, I don't know. Vinegar is acetic acid. So um, ha! <laughs> Steve is here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, let's see. Let me get caught up. I, if I have not answered all your questions, you need to redo it because sometimes they get lost. I think Jason yelled at me one day. I shouldn't say yelled, <laughs> reminded me, <laughs> nudged me because <laughs> they just kind of they kind of slide up and they go off screen. All right, because I'm busy talking, I'm not watching the screen. Hello, Steve. Um, just so you know, L about the septic. Anytime you've got a question about anything. Go to my website and type in that word. In other words, just type in septic. You could type in septic system or you could type in septic tank. But just start with one or two words and then look at all the results that come back. There's so much information at the website. It's going to blow you away. All right. Um, so... Uh, Steve wants to know, do you like toilet paper or a bidet better? Personally, I would use a bidet all day long. I do not have one in this house. The next house I build will have one. Um, we're, it's really funny. Just here in America, um, a lot of other nations do not. They think that the use of toilet paper is, is stupid, is unsanitary. Um, and I, um, it's big business for Procter & Gamble, I can tell you that. And Kimberly Clark. I mean, billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars. Uh, but there's no substitute for a bidet. I mean, 
You're a lot cleaner. It's it's much more sanitary. Um, you're welcome, El Master. Uh, can you put goldfish? <laughs> yes, you can put goldfish in a septic tank, Steve. <laughs> the poor little guys, they probably all die within 30 seconds, would be my guess. <laughs> uh, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. I love that name, Kikahuna. That, that those are so, the Hawaiians have such a great language. It is such, it's such a cool flipping language. I would love to, if I had time, or if I, it be it be like on one of my top ten things list to do: learn Hawaiian. All right, all right. Uh, all of my toilets have bidet seat covers on them. Yes, many arm septic and perum. Yes, good for you. Good for you. Uh, I've not tried those uh, bidet toilet seat covers. I I may get one and try that. Um, um, that's a good idea. Uh, El Mosfet says, my next door neighbor has a barking dog all the time. Any suggestions? Um, well, we don't want to hurt the dog. And the only thing I could think is that you just need to, you need to do a better job of sealing any air leaks around your home because the, the noise is coming inside through air leaks around your windows and doors. Uh, I don't know. Um, maybe earbuds, uh, some really, I mean, high quality ones, a couple hundred bucks, and just start listening to more music. I don't know. You know, just because um, you're not going to hurt the poor dog. Um, Lorene wants to know do the bidets need electricity? I think the aftermarket ones that um, uh, Kikahuna talked about, they do. Maybe well because they probably heat the water. They have to, they would have to have a heater to heat the water. A regular bidet does not because a regular bidet uh, has hot and cold water piped to it. So you adjust the temperature of the water, kind of like a shower, you know, before you start to use the bidet, and then it's very comfortable. So, I mean, it's they're amazing. I'm just, I I would think women would just love them. I mean, they're just a. Uh, for feminine hygiene, are you kidding me? Bidets. They're here's who you here's who you ask. If you know any, if you Lorraine, if you know any women who live up near you that might be in your community that, that come from France, you talk to some French women about bidets. They'll tell you all about them. Big, they're big in France. Uh yeah, I think so. Um so it's it wouldn't be really that hard to put a plug in. Um, I mean, of course, I, I say that none of the you know stuff to me that I go, oh, that's pretty easy. Most people just freak out about. I, I mean, that's that's the trouble. I mean, I I um I can put a plug in next to the toilet. All right. Um, how do you keep the bidet clean? You would clean the bidet the same way that you clean the toilet bowl. Um, you get the water's already in the bidet. Uh, you just take a toilet brush or whatever and just swish it around. The bidet is clean as can be. Not hard. It's all very easy. Uh, I have not been to Hawaii. I want to go. It's on my bucket list. Um, up until the Shamdemic, New Zealand and Australia were on my bucket list to go places. So I would have liked to have gone to New Zealand, Australia, and like I've told you before, UK. I mean, like UK is like number one on my bucket list. There's so many cool places that I want to see in the UK. And um, but now New Zealand, Australia, not going, not going, <laughs> not after not after the way they treated their citizens in the shamdemic. Not doing it. Um. Hawaii, Hawaii is, and I have a friend of mine, a very close friend of mine who lives in Los, Los Angeles, who uh, has got business in Hawaii. He, he I, I don't know, he could have been to Hawaii a hundred times. I mean, there was a time period where every three months he's going to Hawaii. I mean, he knows all the cool places, all the best places. He, he He's a Hawaii expert. And... Uh, I would love to go there with him for a week if I could. And, hit, you know, I would love to go there. All right, boy, a lot of great comments today. Um, 
Exactly. Key kahuna. No electricity needed unless you want it heated. But if you, in other bidets that I would install as a plumber, I would be piping hot water to it. So it would have hot water. Um, uh, all right. Uh, Lorraine says, Japan uses them also. Absolutely, they do. Yes, yes. Um, talk. You're exactly right. Talk to Japanese women. Talk to French women. They're going to tell you all about bidets. They're they're fantastic. Um, I I knew it was Hawaii. I knew Steve what you meant. <laughs> I love it. Hawaii is not the fiftieth state. I know. Listen. We're going to get into politics a little bit. It's kind of interesting. Um, actually, this is not politics. This is history. So I was reading. Um, so back three years ago when I was um, building, helping, helping build my daughter's home up in Bar Harbor, uh, I did a lot of reading because they went to bed much earlier. And, and, and I just had all this. There's no television in the house. So I just started reading books. So I read this book. Uh, really interesting book about building the Panama Canal. And part the, the, the front part of that book was about, um, at that time in the history of the United States, uh, the, the United States, the whole attitude of the, of the leadership of the country was expansion. As, and, and go back through history, look at Steve. Look at Steve's England. Look at Spain. Look at Portugal. Um, I mean, Christopher Columbus, when he came over here, he just didn't do that on a flipping whim. <laughs> His whole trip, you know, the venture capitalist who funded Christopher Columbus and Sir Francis Drake and all these other people, that was the, the royalty back in Europe who were, they needed, they saw they needed to expand and they, they needed to get more resources and they were playing the Game of Thrones and they needed more money. And I mean, so the U.S. did the same thing. I mean, like they were like Panama, Panama. We're all over Panama, man. <laughs> and if you read the story of how it was so flipping corrupt, what happened? Um, so Panama, the country of Panama, used to be part of Colombia. And 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 so, but but it was this horrible rat's nest. It was this horrible place. It had like no value. All right. No value. So the, the people of Colombia back on the, you know, the other part of the country, it was like an appendix. Was, I mean, that's what it looks like on the map. So Panama looks like Colombia's appendix. So they're like, we don't, we don't want the appendix, but you're not, you're not helping us. Well, they didn't, not that they didn't want it. So the people who lived in Panama made a deal with the, the with the, the, leadership of the United States to secede, we funded it. We put our Navy down there and basically <laughs> we, we stole Colum we stole Panama from Colombia. It's crazy. You should read about that. All right. So Hawaii. All right. So I'm getting to Hawaii. So Hawaii, uh, Midway Island, uh, Guam. Are you kidding me? Um, it, you, you get, you spin an earth ball around and you look at it and you go, you know what? It, it, it's from, from a defensive position, just ser seriously. I mean, just from a defensive position here on the mainland, they'd go, uh, you know what? <laughs> we need to have some military bases out here in the flipping ocean. So that's what Wake Island and Guam and Midway and Hawaii is all about. And, and I know they just came in and, <laughs> you know, when you don't have big steel ships, and you've just got small boats there in Hawaii. Too bad. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying it's right. It's just the way it hangs happen. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, let me get caught up. Um, <laughs> yeah, Canada. I'm not going to Canada. I, I've been to Canada a bunch of times. I don't need to go. I, I've been there already. Um, oh, good for you. Yeah, keep me posted, uh, S. Uh, Benin I, I, I'm sorry I'm messing up your last name. But Benitez, I would guess. Ben Benitez. My Aunt Clara was a phonetics expert. She would. She's just cringing up in heaven. Here's what Aunt Clara looks like up in heaven right now. Like, ugh. Why didn't he pay attention? So Benitez, I would say. 
Uh, good. Yeah, I want you to keep me posted as to how quickly, two things. Here's what I want to know. How quickly do you get the phone call? And um, how how long does it take them to show up? And how professional are they? So that's three questions. And the fourth one, which I already know, be just be careful. They're going to be really high pressure. So um, if, if you don't know how to handle high pressure salesmen, just don't don't sign any paperwork the day they show up. Do not do that. Do not do that. Uh, oh, I would love Kikahuna. Kikahuna, I would love to talk to you about the Hawaiian history. I would I would love that. I should, in fact, I'll ask you um, if you if there's a really good book about Hawaiian history that's really accurate, that really tells the truth. Boy, if you would let me know, I would appreciate it. Um, you can either put it in the stream here, or you can just go to my site website and put it on. Just go to the S Tim page and fill out who you are that we talked on the stream. Send me the link to the book. I would love to. I would love to read that book. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, Dave in Canada have to enforce the petrodollar. Yeah. <laughs> Kanakistan. Oh my gosh. Oh. Um, all right. So did you put a site in? I, I if there's something, if there's a website you put in, um, Kikahuna, I did not see it. Uh, you just said you really need to visit that site uh, if you're interested. I, I want to come to Hawaii, but same thing. I'm not I'm not going anywhere. I told this to Alex before the stream. If you just so Steve, I was um, texting Alex back and forth about 20 minutes before the stream went live. He, he's flying right now. He's on his way to Colorado. Uh, he's taking the week off a vacation. And uh, I told him, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not flying anywhere until they get rid of the whole stupid face diaper thing. I'm not, I'm not doing it. I'm not, I'm not participating in the shamdemic. I'm not, I'm not doing that. Uh, yes, I would like to, if you could send me the greatest book, uh, Kikahuna, I would like to see it. Let me know what it is. I'm, I'll buy it. Um, Yes, exactly. Yeah, the 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 leads. Yeah, exactly. That's how Home Advisor works. Uh, Angie's list. Um, those boiler guys are probably paying fifty bucks for that lead. So it's you know. So they try to get be the first in the door, and they try to get you to sign that contract. Um, but they but also that's why I said their price is going to be a little higher because what they do is they they factor in what their cost per job is. Meaning if they only get one out of ten jobs. That they get a lead on, and they're getting they're getting charged fifty bucks a lead. Then they just add that five hundred dollars in. So Espinitas is going to pay that five hundred bucks. All right. I mean, none of this is hard. All right. None of it's hard. Yeah, I uh, I read the pandemic book. I just finished the pandemic book. If you have not read the book, got to read the pandemic book. It's flipping amazing. Actually, as I got to the end of that book, just so you know, I actually. I was a mixture of um, depressed and angry. Uh, and the reason why is because of Operation Mockingbird and how, uh, and my wife, Kathy had told me about this and she yelled at me in the car coming home from church uh, last Sunday. She says, I, I don't believe her all the time. I do believe her. It's just that sometimes I, I might not be strenuously believing her, but we've been played here in America. And Steve, you too, er actually everybody has been. Everybody around the flipping earth ball, there's the earth ball right there, uh, has been played, I don't know, easily the past 50 years, could be 100 years. We've been played about everything. And this shamdemic was uh, a big test, and it passed. I... That's all. I'm going to say this one last thing. <laughs> I saw. Well, I, I was in Bar Harbor this past weekend at my granddaughter's third birthday party. And I'm driving on this road on Mount Desert Island. And if you've not been there, it's like really remote. I'm, I'm just telling, especially this time of year, 
It's a flipping ghost town. At night, on Route 103, that, that takes you from the, the, the bridge down to Southwest Harbor, I could lay on the flipping center of the road of Route 103 for probably an hour and never get hit by a car. I see a guy walking down the flipping road in the middle of nowhere with a face diaper on. That shows you how bad people have been played. And the complete lack of critical thinking skills that, number one, they don't even work. And number two, a flipping illness that has the same mortality rate as the common flu. I just wanted to scream. I mean, I stopped talking to these people, but I wanted to say to them, how come you weren't wearing a face diaper three years ago when the flu was raging? What the heck's wrong with you, dude? And they just blink at you. I mean, they blink. Like this. They, they can't. It's horrible. It's horrible. How badly we've been played. I... Um, Kikahuna says, see, that's a trouble. See, here's, oh, that is a great point. So Kikahuna says, if you wait too long to go to Hawaii, you may need a passport. Well, I think you need a, an illness passport to get in already. Here, this is, I know I talked about this already, and I, I don't want to beat this horse to death, but this shows you how bad, this shows you how the whole illness has never been about health. It's always been about control is because as soon as they started talking about those passports, they should have said, you, you, there's two passports. The one passport is if you get jabbed with the experimental biological agent that could cause you to die. The second passport is one that your doctor will fill out for you if he diagnosed you with COVID and you survived. Because anybody who's got the number two passport, which is the one I should have, has got far better immunity than anybody who got jabbed. All right. So, but have you ever heard anybody in the media talk about passport number two? And that's that's the whole basis. That's the whole basis for any immunity about any illness. I'm not even a doctor. You, if you just went to high school and you paid attention in biology class, you know this to be true. I've talked about this. This is why, and this was in the Panama Canal book, by the way. When they were building the Panama Canal, yellow fever was raging down there. They did, And they did not understand how it even worked. They did not understand how yellow fever was transmitted. They did not know. It took a while. It took a while to figure it out. They finally figured out, oh, wait a minute. It's from the flipping mosquitoes. People getting bit by the mosquitoes, that's causing yellow fever. Well, the mortality rate of yellow fever, are you sitting down? 50%. All right, that should put your head on a swivel. Like, whoa, I got a one in two chance. It's like playing Russian roulette. Like if I get, and yellow fever was bad. You get yellow fever? You're dead in a few days, man. I mean, it was a really ugly way to die. So the question is, how did, how did all the doctors and nurses who treated the yellow fever patients, how were they able to do that? I mean, there was no vaccine. Oh, oh, maybe they got bit by the flipping mosquitoes. And they were one of the two that lived. <laughs> yes, that's how it works. That's how it works. That's how Mother Nature, that's why I'm here today <laughs> and why you're alive watching this live stream. This is none of this is flipping hard. Y you have gotten this far down the flipping timeline because you might have had 10, 20, or 30 illnesses that you've survived and gotten natural immunity and you're not going to get it again.
So anyway, enough of that. Before they ban me. Yes, Steve, they're talking about the next illness. Oh my God. It just, it, it's, it's, I, I think that most people, uh, well, I say that. I see all these sheeple at our local grocery store in Meredith, all these flipping sheeple with face diapers on. Like, are you, so I just want to go outside sometimes and scream. Say, what the hell is the matter with you, man? Flipping idiot. We, if you believe and you believe in what I say, I'm telling you, you need to start passing this around. This is crazy. We need to wake these people up. They need to wake up. Oh, look what Kathy got. Get them out of my pocket. I put some of these on the gas pump coming back from Bar Harbor. Yeah. So I'm putting these stickers on the gas pumps. All right, let me get caught up. And then let's get, let's not talk about the illness anymore. Does I mean it, it, you, you know if you agree with me great if you don't I don't know that I'll convince you but for the love of God if you don't agree with what I'm saying would you please turn on the flipping critical thinking skills up here? Like I said, just use that one example. How come how come I don't get a flipping card that says I can go anywhere? I have better immunity than you would ever get from the experimental biological agent. That right there should just stop you in your tracks. You should go, wow, he's got a good point. How come they're not talking about that? Because it's all about the flipping money. Because Big Pharma wants you to get jabbed five times a year. If they had it their way, you'd get a freaking jab once a week. None of this is hard. All right. Let's go. Let's talk about something else. <laughs> there, I swear to God, the word's going to get out and I'm going to get canceled. I swear. I swear to God. So we have to, we, we need to watch what we say. Um... Okay, let me write that down for it. It's lost on the stream. That's the, so Kikahuna. So is that the book that you want me to read? Nation Within, uh, Tom Kaufman. Say yes or no. All right, got it. All right, all right, let me get caught up. Uh All right, so uh, I'm getting caught up on the comments. Yes, uh, my daughter. Well, that's interesting, uh, Kikahuna. My daughter uh, is that she just started that career. She's a flight attendant on private jets. Um, all right. Uh, ah, the shamdemic has made Steve think that yellow fever and malaria and others were man-made. They could have been. They might have been, might have been. But, you know, you think back, Steve, uh, smallpox, you know, the uh, mother nature has had viruses and other things around long before, you know, medicine really got good. Who killed medicine, just, you know, and it's in the pandemic book, is John D. Rockefeller. John D. Rockefeller completely ruined medicine me worldwide. Single-handedly. Oh, my gosh. You should read about it. Oh, it's horrible. Um, it's horrible to play with people's lives like that. Uh, dirty face diaper. To di exactly, exactly, exactly right. Key kahuna. Kahuna is what I am. Uh, kahuna practices natural healing. I would love to pick up this conversation with you. I would love to get to know more about you, just so you know. 
I'm telling you right now, so would my wife, Kathy. My training started in 1959 for a dozen years, trained in lava tubes to avoid the USA. Really fascinating. Yes, yes, yes. That's John D. Rockefeller for you. You have to read the pandemic book. It's unbelievable what he did. John D. Rockefeller, he discovered that he was in the oil industry, you know. All right. So he made he was the wealthiest man probably ever in the world. And he figured out or some people working for him, like said to him and said, hey, guess what? We can make drugs using oil. And he was like, what? So if you want to control people. I've said this before. It's all interrelated. This is really important. Pay attention to what I'm saying right now. This is so important. The most powerful book you could ever read is, you need to go get it. It's called, I'm, I'm going to put the link right here. I, I beg you to please go read this book. Go get this book. Go get the book. If you want to control people, you use psychology. This has been known for hundreds and hundreds of years. The most powerful, go get that book. Go get the book that I just did. I swear, go get the book. The most powerful psychological trigger of all is scarcity. Now, on kind of a side note, and I'm trying to be humorous here, if you're a woman, you know all about it. You know all about how to use scarcity to get things done. All right. You want people to pay attention to you, then you make something that's really valuable to them scarce. How about your life or their life? So you come in with a shamdemic saying, you're going to flipping die. If you don't do X, Y, and Z, that's what's been in play here the past two years. Nothing but that, that and of course, authority, the, the social trigger of authority and social proof. Uh, authority, social proof, huge. So the media is the psychological trigger of authority. Social proof is the psychological trigger of when you go to the grocery store and you see everybody else wearing a mask, in your brain, it goes, huh? Maybe they know something I don't know. So you put a flipping mask on. Just because of a deep-rooted psychological trigger. And you don't even think about it. That's how powerful psychology is. John D. Rockefeller found out that oil, they could make drugs. He thought, I mean, he could just see it in his head. Billions and billions of dollars. Because if you want to control people, you control their health. So he then started funding all of the medical schools and he took away and made them stop teaching the homeopathic methods that Kikahuna knows. He got rid of all that, but he didn't, he wasn't successful. He didn't get rid of all of it. Thank God. And then guess who started and funded the American Cancer Society? John D. Rockefeller tells you all you need to know. He makes drugs that give you cancer. And then he tries to create a cover up. I'm starting a kid's a fantasy book series about him. He's the, he's the, um, He's the Darth Vader. He's the, um, the whoever the bad guy. I can't think of it. The bad guy that was in flipping Harry Potter, you know, the, with the ugly snake face. Yeah, that's 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 who my bad guy is, John D. Rockefeller. All right, let me get caught up here. Um, I really, Kikahuna. I really want to get to know you, uh, so you know. Uh, Miss uh, Loreen says, I read that the Hawaiian language are being taught to keep them. Yeah, I, I would love to learn Hawaiian. Um, 
MJ. Okay, we're back on track. All right, here. I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you, MJ, for getting me centered again. Uh, how to cut armored cable electric wire. They make a simple device. Um, just go to Amazon and type in BX. So B is in boy, X is in X-ray, BX cable cutter or BX sheathing cutter. Just put in BX cutter, BX cutter. And it's it looks like the old fashioned can openers. And it just, it's a tool specifically made how to cut that. Hello, a simulator YouTuber. I know you're still here. Uh, Cindy, the Hawaiians are coming, oh, uh, to Lorraine. Hawaiians are coming back. We are in control. Good. USA will soon be forced to comply with the laws of occupation. Boy, I, I hope so, but I doubt it. I mean, I'll tell you what. I was in, I was in uh, Washington, D.C. on January 6th. I know what happened. And I'm here to tell you the power of the government, it's pretty scary. I, I already told you that. So here, um, so I'm going to cover this part of it so you don't see it. But I don't know if you can see that. I'm trying to get it. So, so yeah. So I had a visit from these guys on January 20th of last year. So don't know if... Uh, I would love to see you get your nation back. I would love it, but I'm I'm not hopeful. Um, th that link's got to work. That link has to work. Let me let me right click it and try it. Let me try. Steve Steve said, Tim, you should be able to right click and make things work. Um, seeing if it's working. Oh well, I'll tell you what. It's throwing. It's just throwing a stupid. Um, um, yeah, it absolutely works. All right. It absolutely works. It just, what happens is at least on my browser, I'm getting a stupid security link, but here I'll paste in this for you. Here we go. This, I guarantee you, this is going to work. All right. So there, go to that link and get the book. Baltimore. Thank you. Exactly. Uh, Steve Pond. Oh, so was John D. Rockefeller? He was. He was so flipping evil. You have no flipping idea. Steve Pond, U.S. Department of Justice, FBI. That's correct. They were here, two of them. All right, it's starting to get a little dark in here because I forgot to turn on my light <laughs> before I started the live stream. Um, I uh, maybe can. Uh, no, I don't have another light in here. Sorry. You're. We're just gonna have to live with this. Faded light here. Maybe it's a better look. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, why, did, uh, why did the FBI visit me? Because I was in... Oh, here's what happened. Right after January 6th, they used... Um, they took the surveillance... The th tens of thousands of hours of surveillance video. They have thousands and thousands of cameras inside and outside the Capitol. And they took as many headshots of people that were in the Capitol building and they posted them on the FBI website and put it on most wanted, most wanted pages. And I had written a column about the experience I wrote that got published by a tiny local paper here. And the haters, there are haters that live around me. And so a hater went to the FBI website, just picked out a picture of an older guy and said, I know who that is. That's Tim Carter. He lives in Meredith, New Hampshire. And so the FBI is forced to follow up every lead. And uh, that's why they came here, because uh, some guy said, I, the, I matched that photo. It wasn't even close. It wasn't even close. So that's why they didn't arrest me that day. That's why I'm not down in that prison inside Washington, D.C. Um, all right. Uh, you're welcome, ARES. Uh, well, good for you. I hope you get back Hawaii. That would be great. Yeah. Okay. You're exactly right. The fake media. Yeah. Um, yeah. You should read my story about what happened there. So if you, if you, I'll tell you what I'll do. If you, if you go to my Ask Tim page on the website, Ask Tim, um, I'm going to have to go turn the light on. Well, actually I need to go. It's, I got to do a consult call in 10 minutes. Um, I can't believe how time's flown today. Um, go to my website, go to the Ask Tim page if you're interested 
um, and just say, Tim, I saw you. You have to put in your name. You have to put in your accurate email address. <clears throat> I'm not going to spam you. I'm not going to sell your name. Um, if you just say, Tim, uh, uh, I'd like to read the story about uh, January 6th. Uh, I'll email you the uh, the PDF file. It's got all beautiful color photos that I took. Beautiful photos. You're not hearing the truth. Just like just like Kikahuna says, if, if you think that what you're hearing out on the media is true, you're flipping. I got a bridge to sell you. I'll just say this. What if I told you when I rode the subway into Washington, D.C. that morning, I got on at the end of the uh, red line up in Glen, Glenmont. I got In case I did get arrested, I had put this in an envelope and told Kathy about it. Um, inside this envelope is the receipt and the leftover plastic credit card you get of the unused fare for the subway. So it proves exactly when I came into Washington when I left. So it proves it to the second um, when it got scanned. All right. So I rode in on the subway Sitting right next to me were five Antifa thugs. They had baseball bats. They had big hammers in their backpacks. Their bags and their backpacks were stuffed with Trump costume stuff. I'm telling you the truth. They did not have it on. And a true Trump supporter was proudly wearing their Trump gear. The five Antifa thugs got off the subway. I decided to follow them up to the Capitol. I decided just to follow them. I pretty much knew where they were going to go. And uh, they walked up to the plaza, and, and then I broke off. And there were already a bunch of others up there. And this is like uh, 10 in the morning. The Trump people were down at the flipping ellipse. This is why the government is not releasing all of that footage, the, because you would see all of this. You would go, who is all those people up on the plaza? And two hours before, three hours before, uh, they even start to walk up to the Capitol. The people didn't even start to walk up to the Capitol until 1.11 p.m. It takes a half an hour to walk from the ellipse to the Capitol. The break-in started at 15 till 1.00. My email is simple, tim at askthebuilder.com, tim at askthebuilder.com. And I'm, here's the last thing I'm going to say. If you have not already figured this out, if you're watching this, if you do not understand that we are at war here in America, you have got to wake up a little bit more. We are involved in a huge Game of Thrones war, winner take all. That's why all the legislation, it's all party line vote. Go back to Reagan's time and there was bipartisanship, all right? But in the last 20 years, we are at war. Remember what Queen Cersei said to Lord Stark in book one and in the, and in the television series? She said, when you play the Game of Thrones, you win or you die. There is no middle ground. That's what's going on here in America. There's no middle ground. Oh, Steve, we are at war with the domestic enemies that are here in America. I was, I've been elected to public office twice. Most people don't think about this, all right? This is the last lesson of the day, and then I got to go. Most people, I don't know what they say in, in, um, in, in the UK, Steve, when they swear into office, but here's what we say. You go, blah, 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 blah. I swear to protect and defend the U.S. Constitution and the Constitution of the state, wherever you live, it could be New Hampshire, Ohio, West Virginia, I swear to protect and defend the Constitution of the state of Ohio against all foreign and domestic enemies. 
what is a foreign enemy? Okay, like here in the United States right now, you might consider China to be a foreign enemy. If we got into war with China and they won, what would happen here in America? They would come over here. Our constitution is gone. We all become slaves for President Chai or Zai or whatever you pronounce his name. So if that's what a foreign enemy is, what's a domestic enemy? Most people never connect those two dots. We have millions of domestic enemies that live here in the United States that want to burn our constitution. Why do you think it's in the oath of office? Steve, we're going to win the war. We're going to win the war. At least us in America. You know why? Because millions of us own tens of millions of guns and trillions of rounds of ammo. Here in America, I'm telling you, we will never give them up like other countries have. Not going to happen. I got to go. Um, boy, what a great flipping live stream this was. Man, oh, man. Sorry about the bad lighting here at the end. That was my fault. I forgot to turn on the flipping light because it was so bright outside. <laughs> so I looked pretty bad. Sorry about that. Uh, soon, um, soon, going to have um, much better camera. Uh, my son over the weekend talked me into doing a green screen. So we're going to have kind of really neat um, pictures of construction stuff behind me. The live stream is going to get a lot better. So pass the word around. Um, uh, it, uh, so it was a great live stream. It was good night, Will. Uh, good night, uh, Steve. Good night, Jimmy. Good night, Steve. Pawn. Good night, Kikahuna. Man, Kikahuna. Glad to have met you today. Woo! Woo! Lorraine. So many, so many people here. Clint, there's a lot of people here. Yes, it is. I know you and you and my wife would really get along well. <laughs> Joel, hi. I'm with you at least 85%. That's okay. I'll take 85. I'll take 85. All right. I got it. Um, all right. Okay. El Mosfet, Jimmy, everybody, Joel. Thanks so much for being here. Sorry, I, once again, not having the light on. It looks pretty, I look pretty weird. All right, I got it. And I know I'm getting a haircut in a couple of weeks. All right, it's on the list. <laughs> yes, click the like button, please, if you if you don't mind before you leave. Uh, so I will, um, uh, I'll be here tomorrow, guaranteed, no doubt about it. All right, thanks so very much. I got to go. I got to do a quick uh, consult phone call. Uh, guy who's got a, a wet venting problem in his plumbing. So, all right, see ya. Thanks very much. I'm Tim Carter. You've been watching Ask the Builder. Make sure you go to the website. Make sure you sign up for my newsletter if you want a bunch of really, you know, what I think is really great information in it. So go, go sign up for the free newsletter. Thanks very much. Sure appreciate it. Thanks, Will, for reminding everybody to sign up. Yes, mahalo, mahalo, kikahuna. Awesome. Great to meet you. Great to meet you. I'm going to order that book after I finish my consult call. Thanks very much. I'm Tim Carter, Ask the Builder. I'll be here tomorrow. I hope you will be too.